I want to talk about covariance and correlation. And what covariance and correlation do is they measure the relationship between two variables. For example, the returns on two stocks. Now think about it. Why is that important? It's important because if the two stocks don't move exactly together, you'll get some benefits from buying both shares of stock. Because if one goes up, the other one might also go up, but perhaps it doesn't do anything. Or better yet, if one stock goes down in price, the other stock might go up and offset your loss. Or perhaps it doesn't fall. Or perhaps it doesn't fall as much as the first stock. So you may get some benefits from owning two different shares. But if they move exactly together, you get no benefit from diversifying. You know, Think of the case where you bought two shares of Microsoft stock. If the first share goes up, the second share goes up. If the first share goes down, the second share goes down. While you may have more money, you're not reducing any of your risk or your volatility. So I've, I've drawn a little picture here. I've, I've got part of a graph here that I want to illustrate this with. So let's look at, um, for example, a stock that looks like this. It's returned down here. Let me scroll down a little bit. We have time on the x-axis we have return on the uh, y-axis and let's say the returns for this company stock we will say this is stock A look something like this okay so it fluctuates up and down and this is stock A alright now suppose we look at stock B suppose B has returns that look something like this So this one's stock B. You can see that they both have quite a bit of volatility. They go, you know, A goes up, and then it goes down, and then it goes up again. B goes down, and then up, and then down again, etc. But notice that if we were to combine these two stocks, we, might get some, we would get some diversification benefit, because when B is going down, A is going up and offsetting some of the loss. And when A is going down, B is going up, which would offset some of the loss. So if we, we combine the two, a portfolio of A and B might look something like, like this. Okay, so this is a portfolio of A and B. And you'll notice that it doesn't fluctuate as much because the two stocks seem to move pretty much in opposite directions. Now you're not usually going to get this case where they move in this sort of perfect uh, opposite direction, but if they don't move at least together, you'll get some diversification benefits. So combining A and B can be a good thing. So let's take a look at how you compute these things. All right, covariance is is going to be defined. There's a couple of ways to define it. Just like there's a, um, you can calculate um, an arithmetic average and then you can calculate an expected return or expected average. If we do the arithmetic one, we'll sum up from i equals 1 to n, okay, our observations, and it's going to look like this. We have the return of A in period I minus, and I'm going to use R bar A as the average return for A, times R B I, so the return of B in time period I minus B's average return and then we're going to divide by either n or n minus 1. If this is a, a population, that is if we've included every possible case, then you divide by n. If it's a sample, then you divide by n minus 1. You lose a degree of freedom, I believe. I, I believe that's correct. I mean, it's, it's not that critical if you have a big enough sample whether you divide by 100 or divide by 99 isn't going to make a huge difference in the number. 
But let's look at let's look at what we have here. Now, n minus one is always going to be positive. So whether this number, this covariance, is positive or negative will depend on what happens here. If when A is above its average, B is also above its average most of the time. Okay? If this is above average, that is if you know the return of a in the first period is greater than its average value and you get this average by adding up all the observations and dividing by the number of observations so you add up all the returns you have maybe 60 months of returns you add up the 60 months of returns and divide by 60 okay same thing here so if a is doing better than average in the first month if b is also doing better than average in the first month you get a positive times a positive that gives you a positive number Okay, you'll add it to the second uh, case where i becomes 2. So if in the second month a is doing worse than average, but b is also doing worse than average, you get a negative times a negative, which gives you a positive number. If that happens most of the time, usually when a does better than average, b does better than average, and usually when a does worse than average, b does worse than average, you're going to get a positive covariance. So a covariance that's greater than zero means A and B move in the same direction. Okay, not every single time. It doesn't have to be the case that every time A is doing better than average, B is also doing better than average. But when you average it out, that's usually the case. If it's the case when A does better than average, so this is a positive number, B is doing worse than average, so this is below this number, this is negative, positive times a negative gives you a negative number, and if when A does worse than average, B does better than average, you get a negative times a positive, that gives you a negative number. So this is the case where you get a negative covariance. And a negative covariance says a and B move in opposite directions. And again, it doesn't have to be that way for every possible case, but when you average it out, it comes out to be negative. So negative covariance means they move in opposite directions. Positive covariance means they move in, in the same direction. And if they're equal to zero, if, you, if it works out that this is zero, then there's no linear relationship. Okay, There's no straight line relationship. You could get a circular relationship, which would be a relationship, but it's not linear. It's not a straight line. Okay, So covariance tells us whether they're moving in the same direction, opposite direction, or the same direction. So if we go back to this graph here, this would have a negative covariance between A and B because they move in opposite directions. When A is going up, when A is, you know, looks like it's doing better than average, B is doing worse than average. When B is doing better than average, A is doing worse than average, etc., etc. So this is a case where they're moving in opposite directions, and you can see from the little graph I drew, there's a nice diversification benefit because A's losses offset are offset by B's gains and vice versa. Now, the one problem with covariance is that it's not scaled. That is, a, a covariance of 100 doesn't mean that there's 10 times more positive relation than the covariance of, of two different assets that have a covariance of 10. Okay? It's just either positive or negative. So what we do oftentimes is we compute something called the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient is essentially a scaled covariance. And we usually use the abbreviation rho, and I can use the subscripts a, b. And it's, a, it's scaled. And it's scaled to be between minus 1 and plus 1. Minus 1 and plus.
plus 1. What do I mean by that? I mean minus 1 means perfect negative correlation. Plus 1 means perfect positive correlation. Let me try and draw you a graph here. And then uh, we'll probably use another tutorial to do some, some actual calculations. But let's say you have, for example, while right, well, I'm drawing these, these things here, let me draw two of these. All right, if it were the case that you had perfect negative correlation, if we put, let me, uh, let me label my graph here. So this is going to be, let's say, A, and this is going to be B. And same thing here, A and B. So if you, I'm going to draw my line first, because it's easier to do that. If it were the case that you plotted points, you knew what A was, and then you plotted B's point, and there's the first observation. And then you see what A is in the next period, and here's what B is. And every point falls on the line, and the line is sloping downward. This is the case where the correlation coefficient is equal to minus 1. This is what we call perfect negative correlation. When A goes up, B goes down, and we know exactly how much B goes down. Perhaps when A goes up 1%, B goes, uh, uh, A goes up 1%, B goes down 2%. And it's always that way. Okay? That's perfect negative correlation. Perfect positive correlation sort of looks the other way. Okay? I actually should have extended these lines because you can have negative numbers for both. And let me draw, let me use another color here. If it's upward sloping like this, and again, every point falls on the line. This is a case where we have perfect positive correlation. Okay, so this is a case where rho AB is equal to plus 1. That is, if A goes up, B goes up, and it always goes up by the same amount. It doesn't have to be 1 for 1. It doesn't have to be that A goes up by 1%, B goes up by 1%. It could be A goes up by 1%, B goes up by half a percent. But every time A goes up by 1%, B goes up by half a percent. Okay? How much they, they go, how much B goes up when A goes up depends on the slope of this line. But all the points fall on the line. That's perfect positive correlation. That's the case like buying a share of Microsoft stock and then buying another share of Microsoft stock. Or perhaps they have two classes of stock. Oftentimes, companies have different classes of stock um, where, you know, some people have voting rights and others don't, but the share price moves exactly together. So you don't have any benefit from owning the Class A shares of, for example, Berkshire Hathaway and the Class B shares of Berkshire Hathaway. Okay? They're, they're different stocks with different rights and different actual prices, but when A goes up by the Class A shares go up by 10%. The Class B shares also go up by 10%. They're tied together. All right, let me see if I have room here to just squeeze in the formula for correlation. The correlation for A and B, uh, between A and B, again, that's not, a, that's not a P, that's a row, is going to be equal to the covariance between A and B divided by the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B. Okay? This is what allows it to scale between uh, minus 1 and plus 1. And so I'm kind of out of space here, and the tutorial is running kind of long. So in the next tutorial, I'll take you through um, some numerical examples, and I'll actually draw a graph showing the case where we have less than perfect positive and less than perfect negative.